Please welcome on stage Jill Warren, Executive Director of the European Cyclist Federation, and Anna Karina Reibold. They will tell us what they are doing on the European level to make the cargo bike market grow. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. How many of you all have a cargo bike? Yay. Okay. We want that to be the SUV of the future, the sport utility velo, right? Or something like that. Okay. Good. Um, you do the slides or, or do you have the clicker? Oh, it's this one. Okay, cool. Right. So the European Cyclist Federation, very briefly for those of you who don't know us, We are a federation. We promote cycling as a sustainable and healthy means of transport and leisure. We have about 70 members, uh, and we're here uh, at this uh, fair with um, our biggest member, ADFC from Germany, so you can come visit us at the booth uh, as well. So, um, we think cargo bikes have enormous potential um, in, in cycling, um, But, you know, we also know that, you know, both for private use, for commercial use, but we also know that to realize this potential, a lot of policy work needs to be done to make sure that we have the right conditions to realize that potential in our cities, whether it's through infrastructure, whether it's through uh, incentives, other ways to introduce people to this potential. And uh, we've done a lot of projects also together with the industry to quantify that potential, to explore it, to, um, you know, try out different things, find best practice. We also found through an EU funded project that we did together with industry some years ago that this potential is really enormous in, in terms of about 50 percent of, you know, traffic in urban areas um, right now that's used to deliver things, carry goods, could be replaced by cargo bikes. And so uh, the potential's there. We just need to figure out how to um, unlock it and, and tap into it better. So uh, my colleague, Anna Karina Reibold, is going to introduce a cargo bike friendliness of cities dashboard that we've been working on that, that tries to look at, you know, establish a baseline of what's happening in the cities, um, You know, what kinds of things are, are being done to start to unlock this potential? And uh, I'm going to turn over the floor uh, to her to tell you a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jill. Um, so for the past couple of months, we have been working on a cargo bike friendly cities dashboard. And as the name suggests, uh, we have been analyzing 125 European cities according to their Uh, cargo bike friendliness. Uh, so here on this map, you can see all of the cities that are included. Unfortunately, we were not yet able to do that for the whole of Europe. So what we did is we started with 125 European cities. Uh, the way we selected those is that we have the capital cities of every European country included. And then the number of cities uh, depends on the population size. So Germany being the largest European country uh, has nine cities, but every country has at least one city in the dashboard. Um, our research is based on publicly available sources um, and also around seven indicators that we thought uh, represent the cargo bike friendly cities the best. Um, so those are uh, incentives, so financial purchase incentives for cargo bikes. This could be direct uh, purchase incentives or scrappage schemes. We looked at cargo bike sharing schemes um, across Europe, also projects. So these are only projects that the city initiates or that the city actively takes part in. Under uh, the urban context, we look at things like, does the city have um, a low or a zero emission zone? Are the cargo bike parking spaces available? We also found the locations of all the 30 kilometer speed zones. Um, and we also look at uh, whether or not a city has a sustainable urban mobility plan. And if they do, do they include cargo bikes in their sustainable urban mobility plan? Um, other indicators we look at are uh, inclusion, so um, how are cargo bikes used to create more inclusive cities and societies. And under leading by example, we looked at whether the city uh, owns cargo bikes or they make them available to their employees or they use them for things such as street cleaning. And together with Cycling Industries Europe, uh, we also um, did research on the cargo bike manufacturers that are based in the respective cities. So this is what the tool looks like. Um, it's quite comprehensive. It has more than 130 pages. 
So we have a page for each city. This is the example of Hamburg. It's a very interactive tool. Um, also, uh, as I said, all of our research is based on publicly available sources. So whenever you click on something in the dashboard, you will be linked back to its original source. And then you can also um, delve a, like, a little further into, um, into what the city is doing. On the city pages, we basically um, break down the indicators and list everything that the city is actively doing to uh, promote cargo bikes. But then we also have European overview pages, for example, for sharing. Um, this gives a European overview, um, not the whole of Europe, but only the 125 cities. So, for example, we were uh, able to find 73 sharing schemes in those 125 European cities. Uh, so here are um, a few key figures. We launched the dashboard um, at the end of February this year, and we're currently updating it. Uh, so we're doing a new round of research, and only between then and now we um, have made uh, 150 new entries. So we've found 150 new projects across those cities, which I think is pretty impressive. Um, we have been tracking everything since 2018. So what we want to be able to do is sort of um, track how cargo bikes are becoming increasingly significant, how it's a growing movement, and it's um, also a solution to many of the world's most complicated um, challenges. So we saw a sevenfold increase in the number of incentive schemes since 2018. And another way we track the impact is we look at how many cargo bikes were purchased thanks to that. Uh, we were only able to find the data for 13 cities, but we know that um, 14,500 cargo bikes were purchased thanks to those schemes alone. We did the same for sharing schemes. Uh, so we looked at the year when they were implemented and we created this interactive map. Um, on the lower right hand side, you see the year uh, where it was implemented. Um, and when you click play, it basically shows you how it's becoming a very quickly growing movement and um, there are more and more sharing schemes every year. Uh, we have big plans with this dashboard, so we want to be able to extend it to more cities. We would love to have an overview of all the sharing schemes and European cities. Yeah, since the launch, we've been asked by so many people, um, you know, when are you going to do the analysis for this city or that one or, you know, this city's doing great stuff. We'd love to be able to expand the tracker, but we need your help. So if, if that's something that could be a win-win for us and being able to do that for you and having more visibility, let's talk. And, and thank you very much. <laughs>